Here is a look at the storm right now. There you see it's a very well-defined hurricane. Next in Irene's sights after the islands of the Caribbean, the eastern seaboard of the U.S. We know she, at this point in time, Hurricane Irene is a big storm. It's still probably going to be a major hurricane and will come very close to the Outer Banks, if not actually coming right over the Outer Banks. And by that time, it's going to be a large and very powerful circulation, so huge wave action. To treat this seriously within Prairie Hall. 131 to 155 miles per hour. That's ridiculous, Jeff. 7 a.m., New York City. A beautiful September morning sometime in the future. The National Hurricane Center has watched a storm off the coast of Florida turn and head north overnight. The storm is massive, with a radius of more than 100 miles across and an eye wall of 12 miles, and it's rapidly expanding. Once a hurricane reaches Miami, it's no more than a day and a half away from New York City. That day is today. A devastating Category 3 hurricane is about to batter New York City with deadly force. The countdown has begun. So what we're going to see is when that hurricane moves to Cape Hatteras, we're only six to eight hours away. But yet on Long Island, the sky is going to look very good. Once the hazard is identified, regardless of intensity, it could be a tropical depression that's going to make a direct landfall all the way to a major hurricane. And the city will begin to coordinate internally. But people are going to notice that huge waves are coming in. And then the huge waves are going to continue and their nature is going to change. And then the sky over three hours dark. And if you've waited to this time, it's too late to get out. At this point, New Yorkers have only a few options. Move away from any area exposed to water below 30 feet in elevation. Stay away from windows. Go to the interior stairwell of your building and hunker down. At three hours, we're going to be experiencing extremely heavy surf and gale force winds. So it's going to be getting darker and darker. Rain is going to start to fall. The rain will become more and more horizontal with time. Then the front part of the hurricane will move in and the devastating phase goes on. Rush hour, the category three mega hurricane hits town. The strongest winds and storm surge are on the right side of the hurricane, slamming into the harbor. The surge will come up slowly at first, and then as that eye makes landfall, it'll just come up as a big wave, inundate from Coney Island on right up into the southern tip of Manhattan. A tsunami-like wall of water will smash into every inch of the coast. These deadly surges will first devastate outlying coastal areas of the city. As the hurricane continues north, surge levels will build. The financial district in lower Manhattan could see water as far north as Canal Street. The current home of the city's Office of Emergency Management is vulnerable, located in a flood zone near the Brooklyn Bridge. Icons begin to fall. Water levels at the battery start to rise at more than a foot an hour. The water seeps in through every drain and tunnel entrance, flooding subway tracks and bringing mass transit to a halt. Our utility system is underground, very susceptible to storm surge. In Times Square, swirling winds of over 100 miles an hour send neon and glass spinning everywhere. Solid masonry buildings like the Empire State Building and modern steel high-rises stand fast against the storm, but their windows are pummeled and shattered by flying debris. At JFK Airport, Jamaica Bay swells to 28 feet, flooding the landing zones. On the outlying beaches, 22-foot storm surge and 130-mile-an-hour winds pummel single-family homes. Skies suddenly clear as the eye makes landfall. But this is only a lull before phase two hits. It will basically come up and come right back out as that eye makes 
landfall and moves, the winds will turn around as the storm moves past and push all the water back out, along with all the debris, and do a lot more damage as the water retreats. The storm charges into the suburban counties north of the city, wreaking more wind and water damage. Hopefully everybody will be sheltered uh, uh, in facilities that are safe. You know, there may be a period where there is a, a large loss of power, but uh, with the redundancies in place, we hope to limit that as much as possible. Ten hours later, the storm dissipates in light wind and rain over upstate New York and Canada. In New York City, rescue and cleanup operations are already underway. But it will take weeks to get the city back to normal. Citizens should expect to be on their own for up to 72 hours and make the provisions now to lessen that impact when it happens. Motorists will be pulled from car roofs by Coast Guard and city police. The few survivors of the tsunami-like surges in beachfront communities will start to crawl out from the wreckage of their homes. A hit on a major city like New York will easily have national repercussions. There will not only be damage to the infrastructure, but there will be interruption of work, which will have tremendous economic consequences for the country as a whole. One scenario that we should be prepared for is a storm that is about the same intensity of the 1938 hurricane. And that type of event, again, the same intensity as the 1938, the same size, the same forward speed storm would cause insured damages in excess of $50 billion, but total economic damages well in excess of $100 billion. The tragic failures of Hurricane Katrina are another stark reminder of the high cost of ignoring this potential mega-disaster. I think Katrina should have been a wake-up call for everyone in this country as just how devastating these events can be. But experts and scientists are optimistic that New York can survive this doomsday scenario. Uh, values are getting better and better. We're getting much, much more accurate as far as our forecasts go with the uh, path of the storm. Newscasts will provide plenty of advance warning. The media sees these things. They're hyped up to death. So that's a, that's a fortunate thing in some ways. But no amount of warning can change one fact. A killer hurricane will one day hit New York City.